put your email in the chat. I got it pressed, got it. Um, uh, so that I can email you over here. Next one. Oh, no. Um, so I can email you the recipes. Um, having a couple of technical difficulties, please stand by. <laughs> That's okay. Um, welcome. It is February. I don't even know what the date is. The 21st, 21st. Uh, President's Day. Welcome to Downsize Gourmet. I'm Susan Doyle, always senior advisors. We do uh, assisted living placements and memory care and anything senior. So if anybody has any questions about um, senior services, please let me know. I'm free. But anyway, we're here for Downsize Gourmet. And today I am gonna make, I'm so excited, I made these uh, last week. Stuffed peppers, a really healthy stuff. Stuffed peppers, peppers with ground turkey and quinoa. We're gonna make, make Italian, Italian wedding soup. And we're going to make a salad with roasted beets. Are you guys getting feedback? Yes. Yeah, and I just messed up here. One second. I think I'm oh there. Okay. Okay. Freeze half of the ground turkey as I wrap it in wax paper or parchment paper, and then put it in a freezer bag, not just a regular Ziploc. A Ziploc bag, but a freezer bag, because this way it'll prevent freezer burn. I don't know if you've ever taken anything out of the freezer and looked at it and went, eh, this looks disgusting. Gray meat, things like that. That's freezer burn. So we want to protect our meat. So um, you, you would put the leftovers that you don't use in the freezer by doing it that way. But with our, um, so we're going to use about, with this recipe, about a, about a third of this, uh, of this ground turkey. So about a third of a pound of it. And we're going to mix it with quinoa. Now quinoa, if you remember, is like the super grain. It is super high in protein, really, really good for you. And that's what we're going to use. A lot of times when you make stuffed peppers, um, you use beef or a lot of breadcrumbs. We're not doing that here. My mom has this wonderful um, recipe for stuffed peppers that she uses breadcrumbs and garlic and anchovies and pinolis and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, really yummy, but lots of bread. This, we're gonna make it a little healthier, all right? So um, this recipe, we can, we're gonna use two peppers, which is gonna be four halves. I already cut these in half. Uh, you can use yellow, you can use red, you can use green, whatever you want, really. Um, but we're gonna stuff these with our filling, which is made of the turkey. So we're gonna start off right away. I'm going to um, heat up my fry pan here and put a little bit of oil in this. This our recipe calls for some chopped onion and it's really just not that much onion, like a quarter of an onion, but you're gonna chop it pretty finely. This way it'll cook very quickly. And so this is gonna heat up a little bit and we're gonna throw our, so this is probably about a quarter of a cup of onion. So it's a quarter of an onion. Right? Yeah, this is for down, lower. Put this in here. Probably should have heated up my fry pan while I was waiting, but that's okay. Um, so we're going to let that nice saute tip. a little bit. And you know, I'm still not used to my stove here. When did you take it? Just, just for a couple of minutes. Um, I'm going to break into my, my turkey here. And this is just, uh, it's lean ground turkey. I got this at Trader Joe's, but you can go to any grocery store. I mean, you see it everywhere, right? Um, 
And I'm going to use a third of this. And once this um, cooks a little bit, I'm also going to add a garlic clove because we love garlic. We all know I'm Italian. <laughs> it's uh, I have to put garlic in everything, right? So this is going to be crushed garlic. If you don't have a garlic press, you can just chop it up. Or if you want, you can buy the crushed garlic, um, you know, in the jar. I always get that when I want to cheat. If I don't want my hands to smell, I uh, I I use the stuff out of the jar, which is fine. Okay. So our onion is doing very well now. We're going to add the garlic right into the onion. You can, right? You really don't need that much, right? It looks like, oh my gosh, it's not that much garlic, but th that's okay. <laughs> can we mute, <laughs> please? And then I'm going to add my, my turkey. Isn't it with little meatballs? Uh, yeah. She's just throwing the chopped meat in a pan. Mm -hmm. And you can use chopped meat. Brown. This is my right? You can use turkey, you can use chicken. I mean, I know, but I don't know, I probably stay away from beef, um, even though I love it. <laughs> uh, this is much healthier. So, how do we know that the turkey is cooked? Because it's no longer pain, right? So, it doesn't take very long. Um, I'm just going to put this over here for a minute. Um, and once this is cooked, the spices that we're going to add to this, and listen, if you don't like the spices, you can leave it out. But this calls for some chili powder, cumin, and paprika. All right, not that much. It's, um, hmm. it's fine. The chili powder. What is she doing? And I said, if, you, if you're afraid of chili powder, then cut yeah. back on it. Yeah. Things uh, chili powder, cumin, and paprika. Yes, and I, it's set, put your email in the chat, and then I will um, I'll send you the recipe. Can you hear it? Do you want it lower? I can hear. Here? I can hear. You're interested? I, I hope she has our mic off. You what? I hope her. Can we mic. ask the person that has their mic open to please mute so we can hear yeah, you please better? Please mute, please. And then, I mean, I'll go over everything in a little bit. So it's a teaspoon of chili powder. Right, it's going to be a half a teaspoon of cumin. Half a teaspoon. Any more cumin. And then paprika, regular paprika. And this is going to be just a quarter teaspoon, just a little bit, just a little bit. And if you don't want that much, then don't put it in. But I would put a, you know, I, I, I'm a firm believer in adapting recipes, but um, try and put some of it in. If you're, you know, if you're afraid of it, please don't be afraid of it. Uh, if it really does give it a lot of flavor. All right, so, that's cooking very nicely. So I'm gonna lower this. And then we're going to add um, the, it, it's a can, a 14 ounce can of chopped tomatoes. Okay, just regular, ordinary diced tomatoes, chopped tomatoes. Okay, I'm gonna throw that in there. And this way, if there's anything sticking to the bottom of that pan, the tomato juice will uh, will help, you know, um, get it off your pan. And it also gets that flavor into your mixture. So with that, we're going to throw a little bit. We're going to cook this for a little bit, a couple of minutes, just so that everything melts together. So now I can throw this away. Um, 
and then we're going to talk about our, our, uh, our peppers. So as I said, it's just regular bell peppers. I already cut these in half, washed them. I took out the seeds and also some of that, the white rind, right? So this way we're going to have a nice vessel to put our, our filling in. Um, and so this is looking very, very nice. So then what we're gonna also add to this is we're gonna squeeze a lime into our mixture. Now I've also, I cooked some quinoa already. I always like to make extra. You know, when you buy quinoa, let me just show you the quinoa. Um, you can get plain white quinoa. You've got, this one is mixed. I'm not uh, proposing that you go to Trader Joe's, but I have one really close to me. But this one is, uh, you know, diff different colors. And what's the difference? The, the, the difference is the flavor. But when you mix this all together, it really doesn't matter the kind that you use. So what do you do with leftover quinoa? If I'm only gonna use about a quarter to a half a cup of this. Leftover quinoa, we can make it into a salad. And I, I did one of these recipes. It's actually in the Dell Toys Gourmet Cookbook. It's um, quinoa and olives and goat cheese. Um, you can add chicken to it. Make it a lovely salad, put a little balsamic on it. Or believe it or not, um, Quinoa, you can eat it for breakfast. Plenty of people, it's a grain, it's a superfood, high in protein, as I said. So you can add it with yogurt, put some berries, um, you know, have it for breakfast if you want. So anyway, I'm gonna lower this. And as I said, we're gonna add some of the quinoa to our mixture here. I'm gonna use a little bit more because I've got plenty. All right. Now, if you want it more in meat in here, you can do that. If you want more quinoa, you do that. It really doesn't matter. This is a very easy recipe. I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm a big fan of quinoa. So, and plus, this is a little bit liquidy for me right now, and the quinoa is going to absorb the liquid. So that is that. So now what do we do? Now we take our mixture or filling. And we're going to fill our peppers. Very simple. I'm gonna actually. So my, I have, my oven is preheated to 400 degrees right now. And once I fill all these, I'm gonna cover my, my, uh, my pan with foil and we're gonna cook them for a half an hour. And then after half an hour, we're gonna add some grated um, cheddar cheese. It says, you know, cheddar cheese, Monterey Jack, really whatever you want, but the cheddar is going to give it a really nice kick, nice flavor. I like um, sharp cheddar. Right. And this is really super simple, super healthy. Well, as I said, we've got four halves here. They're quite filling. So then what do you do with the leftovers? If you, you know, if you have leftovers, <laughs> which we did, believe it or not, um, they, this is delicious uh, the next day. I actually chopped it up and put it over a salad. And if you have any leftover chicken or, or you, I mean, you could add anything to it. Um, if you also make homemade chili, this is a great starter because this is the same stuff that you put in chili, right? You have the peppers, you've got onions, maybe not the quinoa, but the quinoa, yeah. I mean, it, it's not going to hurt it, right? Um, so... And a little bit of extra leftover filling, but that's okay. Um, now, the, I mean, all this stuff is cooked. So I think the reason why it's going to take a half an hour to cook is that our peppers need to cook. One of the ways to kind of speed it up 
I mean, you don't have to, but if you wanted to speed it up, you could actually hard boil the peppers ahead of time. So stick it in some boiling water for a few minutes. This way it'll make them a little softer and then the cooking time will shorten. So I'm just gonna get a little piece of foil and I'm gonna pop these right in the oven so that we can move on to the wedding soup. Whoa, wedding soup. Okay. Thirty minutes. Sorry. Okay. So now we're move all this stuff out of the way because I don't want you to get afraid when you see all the ingredients for the wedding soup. It's really not that hard. I don't want you to get intimidated. Um, I I love eating wedding soup. Believe it or not, I have never made it before. <laughs> before this. Uh, and so don't get intimidated. Please don't get intimidated. So what is wedding soup? Is it served at weddings? No, definitely not. Uh, and so actually it's called wedding soup because it's a marriage between um, meat and greens, hence wedding soup. Uh, I've never had it at a wedding. I'm Italian and we've never had it at a wedding. But anyway, um, the interesting thing about this is that you make little meatballs, not like the big meatballs that like my grandmother's meatballs that I had, we, we had done before. It's little meatballs, like half an inch, maybe an inch in diameter. And the meatballs cook in the soup. So that's, that's the difference. Traditionally, this is made with um, beef and pork. We're not doing this with beef and pork, we're using turkey. Yes, turkey. So we're gonna start with making the meatballs first. Um, and this, I have the recipe. Okay, I'm gonna turn this stove back on. I'm gonna need it. So we're, what it calls for, for the meatballs, um, is the turkey. We're gonna use a half a pound of turkey. And then put this over here. And you have to, of course, when you make any kind of meatball, grated cheese. I'm a Romano fan. Some people like Parmesan. It's a quarter cup of Romano to half a cup of, uh, I mean, a, a half a pound of uh, turkey. One egg. Oops, thank you, Miss. Um, I chopped up parsley already. It's about two tablespoons of parsley. I'm just gonna throw that in. I like to add fresh herbs to my meatballs. Um, and then if you have fresh oregano, you do the same thing. Uh, I do have fresh oregano growing in my basement, believe it or not, but I didn't bring any up. So we're gonna put in about a teaspoon of dried oregano, but you know, it's really to taste. Um, I like oregano. If you're not too keen on oregano, that's fine. The other thing with this recipe, which I thought was really kind of interesting, is that it calls for smoked paprika. Now, if you're not a smoked paprika fan, then don't use it. I mean, my mother probably wouldn't like this. I'm just going to put a little dash in it. Uh, the, more, it the recipe calls, oops, I'm making this. Um, it calls for um, a quarter teaspoon, but I'm only going to put like a dash because it's really, really strong. I was shocked how strong it was. But feel free to leave it out. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to stir it up. Very easy, just like you would do normal meatballs. And then we're going to um, turn them into meatballs. Okay, this is good texture. Right, let me get my, I have gloves because you know all the gloves, the boxes of gloves you bought at the beginning of COVID? Well, now's the time to use them. Um, <laughs> if you want to get your hands all messy, fine. Um, I don't want to get my hands all messy because then I have to go running back, back and forth to the sink and I don't want to interrupt everything. So uh, I'm just going to, Grab my, oh, here's my, my plate. 
So I'm going to make these. So the easiest way to do this is you rub a little bit of olive oil on your hands. This way, the um, the meat doesn't stick to you and it doesn't get all icky. You know, the technical term of icky. Now, I love using the, this little melon baller to scoop, but these are going to make them too big. So we're just going to use half the size of the melon ball um, meatballs, you know, and then we just roll them just like that. Very simple. And as I said, these are going to cook in the soup. We're going to plop them right in. Actually, it's a lot easier to and just well, it's much it's much easier. I gotta tell you, doing it with the gloves, what a mess when I was doing it. I made this on Saturday. Um, and uh you really make your hands all messy. Now, sometimes, so I just want to make a little side. Um so this is a large egg. Sometimes, um, you know, some large eggs are larger than others. And so it might be a little too gooey, you know. So if you need to dry out your mixture a little bit, feel free to add a little bit of breadcrumb, just a little. I would start like a tablespoon at a time. Um, and this way it'll dry it out. And this way it makes it the roll better. I know I said I was going to use this, uh, this, this uh, melon bowler, but this tends to be a little bit easier right now. Um, but you see how, like, how messy my gloves are? I don't know if you can see it. It, it, it just really, if you have lots of gloves, <laughs> definitely use it. I, I highly recommend it. Um, it's, uh, makes life a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, because it can be pretty gross. Anyway, so, um, we don't need a lot of these. I mean, I'm going to make them all, um, but... <sighs> I, I was surprised, I mean, even though this is really healthy, it's a very filling soup. I mean, you've got the meatballs in it, we're gonna have carrots and onions and celery in it as well, um, and a little bit of pasta. Um, we're gonna finish it off with, um, uh, with spinach and a little bit of lemon, uh, lemon juice. So really, really healthy, really, really good for you. And believe it or not, it is not hard to do. Um, I. Uh, we use four cups of chicken stock in this. I mean, I have a box which is equal to, to one box. Sometimes you might go into, might be five cups for this. Um, if you make your own chicken stock, my mom does it all the time, uh, you know, and you keep it in the freezer, feel free, this is the time to pull it out. Um, I'm gonna bring some of this over to my folks. I'm gonna see them tomorrow night. Don't tell them I'm using boxed stock. My father will never eat it, <laughs> but it's still very good. It's pretty funny. All right, so this, and we throw it in the garbage. I just love that. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, so the meatballs are all ready. So we're gonna get started on the soup. And the soup, once again, we're gonna add, add a little bit of oil to our pot. And we're going to saute, um, this is a half an onion. And it's six smashed garlic cloves. Now, when you smash a garlic, it slivers by itself. Okay, so let me show you. So here's a garlic clove. I took the, the peel off of it already. And cut the end off of it. And then you take a wide knife and use the ball of your hand and you literally smash it. And you see how it really breaks up into pieces like that, right? So I, I did that to six of them. If you don't, you know, if it hurts your hand, then don't smash it. I mean, you can also just use some um, chopped up garlic, as I said, either from the press or from the jar, no big deal. So this is a half of um, onion that I chopped and six garlic cloves. Whoa, this is a little hot. To back this off a little bit. Woo! You know how much I love my electric stove. It gets super hot super quickly. So we're just gonna cool that down a bit because we don't want to. Oh, 
So we're just going to saute the garlic and onion. Couple of minutes. And then what I also have, I have chopped up one, um, one carrot. So I have one big carrot that I have peeled and chopped. And then it's about this big. And then two celery stalks, which I also chopped. And that's what's in this container. So we are going to and then we're going to add the carrots and celery. Now you can buy this stuff pre-chopped in the grocery store. I see it all the time. Makes life so much easier. It's a little bit more expensive, but if you don't feel like chopping, it's, it's a great option, right? So I just have to my recipe for a second. Where did my recipe go? Oh, oh here it is. It's under my new house. Because even I have to follow the recipe. Okay, so um, we've got this in here. Very simple. You can also make this in a in a slow cooker which obviously I'm not going to demonstrate, but literally when you do this in a slow cooker, you throw everything in the slow cooker and you put it on um, low for five to six hours or high for four to five and just let it all cook together. I think I'm going to do that the next time just because it is so much easier. So now we've got the onions, the garlic, the carrots, and the celery. Okay. So then what do we do? We add a box of chicken stock, low sodium, right? This way, you don't want to get one that's regular because at least you know how much salt you're putting in. If you buy the stuff with a regular um, chicken broth, you don't you don't even have much salt in there. It tends to be a, a, a lot of salt in there. So I'm going to add this entire box. It's, it's four cups. And then that goes in the garbage. Um, and then we're also going to add a little bit of red pepper flakes, just a little, like say a pinch. So I've got my little shaker. So, you know, a few shakes. Then I've got my meatballs. My little meatballs, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 of them. Whatever. And we just plop them right in. When I made this the other day, I was just like, really? This is, this is interesting because I'm so used to making meatballs that traditional way where you um, make your meatballs and then you you um, you roll them in breadcrumbs and you fry them or you throw them in the uh, in the oven to cook and then put them in tomato sauce. And this is completely different. Uh, here I am. I rolled them and uh, just going to pop them in the soup to cook. I wish I had my gloves back on. All right. So that's going to cook for about, um, about 15 to 20 minutes. So how do you know when it's done? Well, these are really, really small meatballs. Um, if you want to check them, um, the inside is no longer pink, right? But it's about 15 minutes. So we're going to let them cook for about 15 minutes. And that's going to be that perfect timing. And I'm going to put my top on my pot and we're not going to look at that for a while. So in, after 15 minutes, we're going to add um, four cups of spinach and some lemon juice, right? And then we're also going to um, 
you have to add pasta to this. Sorry, it's Italian wedding soup. So they say you can either use orzo or, and I'm not, uh, I'm not exactly sure how to say it, but is it a chini de pepe? It's, they look like little grains of sand or maybe big grains of sand. And they're perfect for soup. Uh, I made it the last time with orzo. It was good. I like it better with this. It's much lighter, much, much lighter. Um, so what they tell you to do in the recipe, and you should do this, um, never cook the pot, the dry pasta in a soup because it's going to absorb all the liquid and then you're just going to get mush. So what you're going to do is you're going to cook your pasta and it's only going to be a half a cup of pasta because it's going to make loads of pasta um, in boiling water. So for this, it's in nine minutes and then you drain it and, you know, cool it down. Um, and then this, the soup is going to be served over the pasta, but we'll get to that in a little bit. I just wanted to explain, you know, how this soup works. So as I said, we're going to let this cook for about 15 minutes. Um, and I'm going to put this on the side. This is a good opportunity to see what my, I know you can't see it, but I'm checking out my, ooh, it's smelling good already. So the next thing we're going to talk about while everything is cooking, we're gonna make this beet salad. Put all this stuff away. And why beets? Why beets? Beets are so good for you. It's a root vegetable. It's great in the winter time, but this salad is gonna make you feel like it's springtime because it is, I added some citrus to it. It's really, really delicious. <clears throat> so how do you cook beets? Um, and why are beets good? Well, they're purple. Purple, anything purple, it's an antioxidant, so cranberry, these antioxidants. Good for high blood pressure. We need to eat a lot more beets. <laughs> um, good for digesti di digestion, right? Um, I got these today. I went to Stop and Shop. Never get rid of the beet greens. The beet greens, we used to, people, they always threw it away. This has become so popular, beet greens, and they're delicious too. So um, what, what can you do with beet greens? You can chop them up and put them into salad. Like this isn't washed. I washed the beets at the bottom already. I haven't washed these yet. But you chop them off, which is what I'll do right now. And you'll rinse them. And then you can, as I said, put them in a salad. You'll be uh, very, very fancy or you saute them in garlic and oil, salt and pepper. We've done this a million times. It is so delicious. I really was surprised at how good it is. So it's a really good side dish. So we're gonna save this for later. Um, and we're probably gonna have them tonight. <laughs> um, but then what do you do with beets? How do you cook them? They're the simplest things in the world to cook. Like really very, very simple. So I scrub these with a, with a brush um, to get all the dirt off of them. And what you do is you cut the top off and you cut the bottom off. Very, very simple. Top, and they're really red. Bottom. And this is when you add, you put your gloves on again because beets will stain your fingers and your fingernails and your clothes. So be very, very careful. Also pomegranates too. Like if you ever get a pomegranate and you wanna clean it out, um, right? To get, get the little fronds off, Put, put your gloves on and do it underwater. Same thing with this. So with a beet, you're just going to cut the top and the bottom off. And then you're going to get a piece of foil, a little bit of oil, and Salt and pepper. This is my kosher salt and pepper. Wrap them up. And you stick them in the oven at 400, anywhere between 35 and 60 minutes, okay? Uh, and they're ready when they're pork tender. So you put a fork in and if it's, it, you can get a fork through it, then they're ready, okay? Uh, very, very simple. Now, of course, I'm going to, I did that already. I made them already earlier today. Oh, 
If you have fat beets, like really big beets, cut them in half, which is what I did with these. I cut them in half. And so once I roasted them, you can just take the skin right off. It peels off very, very easily. Um, these have been sitting for, um, for a couple of hours, so um, might seem like a little bit harder to, to peel, but not really. They're perfect, my goodness, they are a, the perfect, perfect um, texture right now. You can also peel them under uh, under water. So just have, you know, running water going. And this way, if you don't have gloves, it's going to uh, protect your hands. And so these were pretty big beets. Um, and as I said, I cut them in half. Now, if you don't feel like peeling them, I mean, I already washed them. Uh, I read something online that you can actually um, you can eat them with the skin on. I mean, especially if they're, if they're already clean, you know, I got to tell you, this is not, these skins are very, very thin once you roast them. So, okay. throw this away. I'm good. Okay. So now what do you do? Very simple. You can cut them into wedges. You can cut them into slices. I'm going to, or chop them up into little pieces, whatever you like. So I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to chop them up. I mean, these were, these were two beets. These were two large beets. And then, where did I go? Oh. I've got my, you can top it with balsamic vinegar, sherry vinegar. Um, I've got both, nothing fancy. So we have a salad here. All this is, is uh, I clean, I wash some arugula. Um, I have some oranges. So citrus is in season right now. So you can um, just peel an orange and plop them in there. And then we can put little beets on top. We went out to dinner the other day uh, and they had this beet, beet salad. Oh my gosh, that's what made me think about doing this. So we're gonna put a little bit of balsamic on it. Beets and goat cheese or feta go together. Um, so, I just bought a little bit of feta from the grocery store. They have little chunks of it. This was a chunk, it's about that big. Um, it's just a generic one. I mean, some people, you can get um, high-end goat cheese, but this, I gotta tell you, this is perfectly fine. And then chopped walnuts or pecans. Yum, 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 yum. I don't even that crazy, but, isn't that pretty? So pretty. And that's what we're going to do for our side dish for either our soup. Um, Cause you want to be able to have something with that soup. I mean, it's still, it's got, it's very healthy. It's got the, um, it'll have the spinach in it, but um, you want to, I, I'm always a big fan of greens. So, all right. Well, so let's go take a look at my, Looking really here. Oh my gosh, my stuffed peppers are looking great. I'm going to put my grated cheese. I've got some grated um, cheddar cheese, as I said, that I grated earlier. You could use Monterey Jack, cheddar. I'm going to just put it right on top. I took the foil off and I put the, the cheese on top. This is going to be ready in a jiffy. This cooked a lot quicker than I thought it was going to cook. It's probably because I have it on convection. Um, but everything on the inside of it is, is cooked. All right. Ooh, here we go. This is looking good. Okay. So our, we're in good shape here. 
So if you can see, we're going to switch over to the camera that's looking down on my soup. And it's boiling away, looking very yummy. So I'm going to go grab my spinach, my four cups of spinach. And if you want less spinach, use less spinach. Or quite frankly, if you want to put kale in here, you could use kale. If you wanted to use escarole, whatever you want. But I mean, traditionally, it's spinach. And then we're going to take half a lemon. Or if you want more lemon, you can put more lemon. And you really need to do the lemon also. It makes a big difference. This, oops. And we're gonna extra fiber because I see I got a couple of pits coming through. That's okay. No I probably should have done this using a, a juicer, but it's all right. Okay. So this, we just want it to wilt. But we're gonna let it cook for, for a couple of minutes. Okay. And then I'm just gonna move this stuff out of the way. I have already cooked my pastas, my little pastas, my pacini, right? And they, they see they look like little, I don't know, um, little sand pebbles. Now, as I said, this recipe calls for you to serve to put this, the pasta in a bowl and then put the soup over it. I gotta tell you, I just plop it right in because I like, I want it to get a little bit of, I want the pasta to get a little bit of that flavor of the soup. And this is so much better the next day, I gotta tell you. I wouldn't put all of the pasta in because it is gonna um, absorb all of your, you know, your chicken stock. So this way when you serve it, um, you can always add more. You can't take it away. You can always add more. Oh, this looks really good. So let me just move all this stuff out of the way so that you can see what I've done. So I, this is not quite ready yet, but this is. <laughs> so I made this on Saturday and we had it for lunch today. And I kept a little bit on the side. So how long can you keep this? Uh, so if you make all this soup, what do you do with it? Um, three to five days, three to five days is really what they say. Um, so this one has the, um, a lot more of the smoked paprika. You can really smell it. As I said, um, paprika goes a long way. And you see all these, I mean, these meatballs, they're, they're small, but they're big. This is a very, very hearty soup. So this is our Italian wedding soup. My grandma would be so proud of me. Let me pull out the Well, these are about ready. I'll show you my stuffed peppers. I should probably put them on, put one on a plate so you can see. What it looks like, because it's really, it's so pretty. You know, I'm all into, my mom always says, it's all about presentation, right? It's gotta look pretty. So, Look how pretty that is. You've got orange and red, or yellow and red. Um, and you've got the soup that has all these colors and the salad, so yummy. So this is my stuffed peppers with quinoa and turkey. And this is the Italian wedding soup made with um, turkey. You could also do chicken if you wanted to. And it's got um, spinach and lemon in that. Uh, if you wanted to add more grated cheese on that, you could. I want you to make sure you do that. And then um, just a side salad with 
roasted beets, super easy. Now, if you wanted to do, add, um, if you wanted to roast carrots with them too, you could do that too. Whatever root vegetables, it's the same concept. You might not have to um, put foil around them. You know, just throw them on a on a um, on a pan with garlic. I mean, with uh, salt and pepper and oil, and stick them in the oven. So there you go. So Donna had a couple of suggestions. Yes. She put suggested putting the stuffing over baked potato. Oh, what a great idea. I love that idea. Baked potato. Yeah. And I got some leftovers. Yes. And she also said that yeah. she'd cooked meatballs raw and tomato sauce and it came out much softer. Right? Oh, interesting. Meatballs raw and tomato sauce. Okay. And that she discovered white and rose colored beets last summer. Oh, aren't uh, white beets? You found white beets? Wow, that's interesting. Never seen those before. And rose, it's amazing all the different colors that they're coming out with. Um, really, really delicious. So um, I love that idea of putting the, that topping, the, uh, the stuffed peppers mixture in a baked potato. That would be, oh man, delicious. Really, really good. Good idea. Everything looks yummy. <laughs> you, I wish you were here to have some. Yeah, I wish I was too. <laughs> I keep telling you that every month. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, yeah, so this is, once again, we have so much fun doing this. Uh, I know it's President's Day and people are off and the senior centers are closed, but we're here. <laughs> Glad you could join us. Well, so. thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure. And don't forget, uh, I, I'll email you the recipes. They're all ready. Uh, I just have to send an email and this way you'll go. Thank you, Susan. Oh, you're so welcome. Happy President's yes. Day. Happy February. Happy, happy. Yes. I did the Absolutely lentil soup. Absolutely delicious. Oh, you made the lentil soup? I did the lentil soup. And what I do is I take a rotisserie chicken and then I, I shred the chick and put it in the, you know, in the lentil soup. Oh, that sounds good. Delicious. I, delicious. Oh, that sounds great. Yum. Mm. Well, thank you. Thanks for telling me you tried it. Oh, good. Yes, All right, very listen, good. If anybody has any questions, any other questions? Just a comment on the beets. This is Donna. Um, my son grew the beets, the white ones and the rose colored ones and the dark colored, the regular colored ones. The white ones are absolutely incredible. They're a little bit sweeter. Oh, I bet. They're fabulous. You know, in our old house, I, I, we had a garden and one year I made beets. I, could, I mean, I grew beets and oh my gosh, it's incredible, absolutely incredible. But I have to keep an eye out for the white ones. I love the, um, the orange ones, the yellow ones. Oh my gosh. Those are so I, I didn't do that. He had rose colored. It rose. was almost like red and white mixed together. I, I, wow. I like to try different things. And I said to him, I'm, Thank you very much. I am a beneficiary of. <laughs> <laughs> Send them this way, North Stanford. <laughs> oh man, what a, oh, that's great. I'm going to keep, well, yeah, I guess the, the, well, some of those uh, farmer's markets, you might maybe, um, maybe find them. I don't know. Or maybe I just have to, Paul, we got to grow some beets this year. It may, oh, it'll keep the the deer away, maybe. Well, they maybe they won't now. Deer will take everything. No, they'll eat them. <laughs> they'll eat everything. And, <laughs> and, and make a this. mess. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. It was the the groundhog that came up under my English ivy, so I didn't see the hole, and he picked clean my eggplants. <laughs> broke them apart and ate the inside of the eggplant and left the outside. I was oh mad. no way! Oh, you <laughs> groundhog! Oh, yeah, we, we caught quite a few of them. We had to have a heart trap, so we caught them and gave them a new home. They're big too. Yes, they are. Some they tunneled are. under my under my front stairs, the cement stairs, fourteen steps. They tunneled all the way underneath <gasps> from the top to the bottom. Oh yeah. <laughs> They go, they make their tunnels because this one we think tunneled all the way from my neighbor's yard <laughs> to underneath, like by my my porch. Oh my God. So yes. Yeah. I was not feeling very humane. 
<laughs> no, no. Especially after I paid to have the guy put the traps out. He puts a, a, a lettuce leaf with a little bit of peanut butter on it. Didn't do anything. But no, there was... they like uh, apples and uh, what else did I throw in there? I forgot. Something more firm. But yeah. Oh, celery. They so... followed. I made a trail from the hole into the trap. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we had we had one all of a sudden he was on our stoop in our old house and we went, what the heck is that? And yeah. we were in a very, you know, our, our the houses in our neighborhood were right next to each other. I mean, <laughs> and like you could give, ask for sugar by just putting your hand out the door and you'd be at your neighbor. Anyway, uh, but I'll never forget, remember when we saw that? Oh, we were like, whoa, where'd you come from? Okay. Oh. But anyway. <laughs> Oh, keeps us on the our home ownership <laughs> <laughs> but anyway listen have a have Thanks a wonderful again. day and Thank we'll see you. you next month i think it's march 21st is the third I think so. yes yes it's yeah. March one two three yeah perfect. yeah the third week right the third week the yes third is the 21st yep perfect all right have a great day Bye. thanks so Thank much you. thank you so Stay much well. susan right. thank you Bye. Thank okay. you. Okay.